happens at the first consultation for a breast lift and possible reduction. Um, at the first consultation, first consultation, I like to work out what you are, essentially what surgery you're going to have done. So I'll talk to, about, talk to you about what you would like to achieve, what your aims are, if it's for breast, what your breast history is, if you've got any history of lumps, cancers, if anyone in the family has had breast cancer, what your general health is like, that you're suitable for surgery, what medications you take, allergies and so on. BMI. BMI. Um, then I will examine you, I will work out whether you're suitable for surgery, um, whether you're suitable for the kind of surgery you think you're suitable for, or if I think there's anything different. I will photograph you first, then I'll do all of those markings and measurements that I was just talking about. Um, then I'll photograph you again, um, then you, you get all dressed and you're sort of rubbing ink off, and then we'll talk through the plan. At that point, we should have a really good idea of what we want to do. Then I give you some homework and I say, right, here is what we actually think we're going to do. There are a whole load of risks and complications associated with that procedure. Here they are. And I give you, by way of reading material, to take away with you, because this is normally towards the end of the consultation now. I'll run through some of them then, I'll make sure I haven't missed anything out, and I'll get you, send you a sort of list of your risks and complications. Mm. Then I see you for a second consultation. I always do this, I will not, not do this. And um, at the second consultation, you have had a chance to sort of look through the list, read it in detail, assimilate, do your own research, ask questions, think of things. I say, write it all down, come back with a list. I like a list. And then the second consultation, we will go in more detail through all of that. That's a really, um, you know, more in-depth consenting process. If there's any kind of, you know, you, we were saying that we might be do the, doing this operation, but what if we did it this way? Mm. Could we do it that way instead? So we really thrash out the finer details. Then there's a lot of questions about um, recovery time, what can I, you know, what garments do I need, how do I prepare? Mm. Then there's a bit about logistics, often patients will ask, um, sometimes they'll ask as much detail as, you know, what hospital now specifically will this be happening in, do you do finance? Mm. Um, do I need someone at home to look after me? Yeah, what do I need to get into the house, what time <laughs> do I, I need to arrive, home? when can I stop eating and drinking? So, so that's those two consultations covers all of those things. Mm. Um, it should be reinforced for you in writing. You get, so afterwards, we know that patients tend to forget 30 to 40, remember 30 to 40% of what they're told during a consultation, it's astounding. So you get repetition in different media. I will write you a letter of the consultation. I will send you pre-prepared information sheets. I'll send you consent forms. I'll send you e emails with links to videos, a bit like this one, but slightly less irrelevant sometimes uh, than we've been tonight. Um, with little snippets that are relevant to what our consultation was about. So it, even though these are you know, short two minute videos that obviously have existed for some time, they will be prepared and curated in a way that is very specific to you. Um, so you'll get what's relevant to you. So through that process, um, well, that's what happens. Yeah. It's a bargain really, if you think about the consultation fee. It really is. Yeah. Um, Includes oh. all pre and post-op consultation.